This episode is the result of what I would call an aha moment. For the most part, Holistically Speaking is an interview or conversation based podcast, right? With unbelievable guests. I've had unbelievable guests on this show sharing the space with me, but I realized that these one-to-one moments, these moments with you, my dear listener, have really opened up a new connection that I am so grateful to have as my part of the journey that I have at this mic. And that includes some topics that I haven't explored or really given much thought to until it's put before me. And then I'm left there thinking, how do I embrace this? What do I feel about this? How can I go forward with this and share this with my community, with my clients, with my friends, with my family, and with you? I had no idea, no idea the impact that sharing my own personal story about not having children would have on this community, as well as those who just discovered the podcast just by searching the topic. Episode 121. I opened up and shared my own story about not having children. And the reason why I did that episode was because I can't expect others to share their journey and their story without creating a safe container and sharing myself, right? Taking a moment to press record and be vulnerable in that moment. So I went first. And that's where we're going today. I pass the mic over to you the listener, to share your why about not having children. And I ask you to press record and take a deep breath and just share that personal journey. Are you childless or are you child free and why? So I discovered there's power in community a long time ago. There is strength when you know others are going through something similar. And knowing that as not only a mental health practitioner, but also a human being with my own stuff, I wanted this to be the place where you could come and share and know that you're not alone, no matter what your story is. So that's what we're doing. We're listening together. We're going through this process together. So I'm just going to press play and tune in along with you as we explore what is your why for being childless or child free. And you're going to hear a lot of whys from fear to freedom, mental health to miscarriages, doubt to determination, and even some realizations that sparked a deeper level of compassion. Truly quite beautiful. So where do we start? I found that one why that has surfaced through this entire conversation, both on this podcast and just in general conversations that I've been having is around fear. What if fear guides you, right? And that's where Carol takes us with her voice. But through that fear and through the grief, she also found a sense of peace. Take a listen. Hi, Hillary. My name is Carol, and I'm in Portland, Oregon. I'm 40 years old, and I don't have children, and I don't intend to have them. My why is actually pretty grief-based. Um, I spent a long time really wanting kids, but being afraid that I wouldn't find the right partner to have them with. So I kept giving up on it and putting it off. Um, thinking that I would be okay without it, convincing myself that I didn't need children to be happy. When I lost a relationship at age 38 and really truly felt that I had lost everything, Um, I had lost love and I had lost any hope at having children, um, I realized how deeply I had always wanted it and how all of the choices to wait or to think I didn't want them or didn't need them um, had been mistaken. But at age 38, it felt that the process of trying to find a relationship to support having children would be even more heart-wrenching than going through the grieving process. So I chose to grieve, and I'm still in it. I don't think I'll ever stop grieving, 
But through that grief, I have found a really beautiful peace and an ability to be with that grief and acceptance and have a happy life. Mm, Carol, I am so glad that you found your peace and yourself. And grieve, my friend. All I can say is grieve. Accepting yourself is the most important gift that you can give you. So thank you for sharing. What about those who want nothing more than to be a parent? So much so that they put their bodies through an unbelievable amount of trauma. Now, I have a lot of friends who have had IVF. Many had it more than once. Sometimes it was successful. Sometimes it wasn't. Other friends and family members went through the trauma of miscarriages, sometimes one, sometimes multiple. How do you face the uncertainty and finally make a choice that enough is enough, that you've put enough stress on your body and your mind and just realize that life itself is the blessing? Well, Bernice shares more about that topic. I'm Berenice Howard-Smith, owner of Hello Lovely Design and the co-founder of the Full Stop podcast and community hub. I've been through six rounds of failed IVF and had recurrent miscarriages. I consider myself to be more, not less, for my childlessness. Thank you, Bernice. You certainly are more. You certainly are for just being present with who you are and how you feel. So thank you for sharing. Freedom and flexibility doesn't mean that you don't grieve the loss of not being a parent. I can speak to that personally. And sometimes health concerns just solidify that it's not part of your journey. And at some point you just accept that, but it doesn't come without the pain. Katie shared her own personal health journey, the emotions that came with it. And in the end, her choice was still the same, and it's one that she's always believed was for the best. Take a listen. So I decided at a pretty young age that I didn't want to have my own children. Um, I grew up in a really small town where, as a woman, that was what was expected of you. You got married and you started popping out kids. Um, and I just never really identified with that as the oldest of three kids in a pretty turbulent household. Um, I had to do a lot of parenting from a young age, um, and I knew I just kind of wanted out. Um, so while everybody else was having kids in high school and college from my hometown, hometown, I was planning my escape. Um, and once I got out, I really didn't look back. Um, I moved from Podunk, Florida to Washington, D.C., and um, started my career. And I have built a really awesome life. Um, and I really never gave kids a second thought until it came time. I had a hysterectomy last year, um, at 35 due to some health things. Um, and it was weird because I was grieving something I didn't even want, but just the fact that the option was now no longer a thing. Um, but I regret nothing. I have a, an amazing fur baby and, um, a life that is really full and gives me the flexibility and to travel the way I want to. So, yeah. Love that, Katie. Katie, I hope you're healing well. I hope you've healed from your journey and that you love it up on that fur baby and those around you. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was beautiful. Like Katie, Nicole made a choice at a rather early age not to have children as well. Now, Nicole is happily married. She found a partner with a similar vision. And even if their original reason for not having children is different, the outcome has created new possibilities full of adventure for them as a couple. So let's hear what Nicole has to share. Hi, my name is Nicole and I'm 50 and I chose to be childless. Um, actually, I chose that way back probably when I was a teenager, I just knew that that was going to be my life, even though, you know, I was still curious or open. But the reasons why for me is I was raised by a um, single mother and one of three girls. And I saw how hard that was. And I saw the sacrifices that my mother made. 
And I just knew I wasn't the kind of person that was willing to do that. I had a lot of pursuits that I wanted to accomplish, very independent, wanted to travel the world and be my own person. And I knew that um, having children wouldn't align with that dream and goal. And my husband, uh, when I met him, I was 38, he was 41. He didn't want to have kids nor had any. And he did so because a few reasons. Um, one was he felt like there was enough kids on the planet and we, we have a lot of unwanted children and overpopulation. And the other was because of mental health, health issues that he had been through and his mother as well. He came from a single mom as well. And he just didn't want to pass that on. And we decided we wanted to travel the world and and have those experiences without children. And here we are doing just that. Happy travels, Nicole. Appreciate your share. And I hope that your adventures are bountiful and beautiful. And I'd love to see some pictures from where you and the hubby go next. Definitely share those with me. Well, this podcast isn't just about women, as we have seen from what Nicole shared and shared a little bit about her hubby's journey as well. And that's where Mark comes in. He opened up about his own loss the value of family, and his desire to be a dad as he juggles the work-life balance. Does that sound familiar? His vulnerability speaks volumes, in my opinion, and this creates the space for a new line of dialogue that perhaps isn't common, but maybe, maybe it should be. So here's what Mark has to share. Hi, Hillary. My name is Mark Matthews. I'm 29 years old. I'm finishing a PhD in social psychology, and currently I'm traveling all 50 states of the United States, spending a week in each state to figure out how we unite our country. At the heart of everything I'm doing, I keep thinking back to my 15-year-old self who just so desperately wanted a family. I lost my mom at nine and my dad at 17, and my whole life I always wanted a little girl who I could love and nurture and honor in a way that I don't think my mom was nurtured in A. And now as I approach my 30s, I just find myself longing for that opportunity. I find myself craving it all the time as we stay with people and families and I get to spend time sometimes with, you know, families and children. And I get to help them grow and I get to pour into them and I get to share enthusiasm and excitement with them. And I just think, man, That's all I really want. But as I approach my 30s, I feel a tension. I find myself having an opportunity to be able to help so many people through the work that I'm doing, but that also requires an incredibly busy schedule, and I never know if I can do it. I just keep asking myself, will I regret this? If in the next five or 10 years, if I don't start a family, if I don't have children, will I regret this? That's the honest place where I'm coming from when I think about this question. It's a very important question. I'd love to have more dialogue about this out there. Mark, I love that you shared so openly about this. Let me say this, my friend. When the time comes, when the time is right, I have no doubt that you are going to be an unbelievable dad. I could just hear it in your voice. I know in the work that you're doing that you can understand What happens when we put resistance into play, right? So I'm going to just be a gentle reminder to you here that you just need to trust the plan. Surrender and release that agenda because when you least expect it, when you least expect it, once you've aligned with your vision and just put it out there, the universe will align with it. So keep doing what you're doing, my friend. And thank you for being you. And when that little one comes along, I can't wait to hear all about it. Sometimes we have this agenda, don't we? You know, I talk about this a lot. And it's not unlikely for others around us, especially when we're dealing with parenthood, to also have an agenda. You know, the expectations of what's supposed to happen next, right? The expectations of what you're supposed to do with your life. And that can be overwhelming. It could be hard to deal with. It can put a lot of pressure on you. And that's Rachel's story. Rachel shared pretty openly about this. And I love 
where she goes here because when someone asks you if you plan to have kids, does it really need to be a hard yes or no answer? You don't have to share anything you don't want to share, right? And you don't have to have an answer in that moment too. The answer really is if it's meant to be, if I choose or I'm still considering it. But really, these are boundaries that you have to think about for yourself. So I want us to take a listen to what Rachel has to share because it really opens up a whole new line of dialogue about what is expected and what is it that's best for you. Hi, my name is Rachel Dalton. I'm the host of the Wine, Dine, and 69 podcast. And my relationship with uh, kids and the question of if I'm going to have them is um, goes all the way back to being raised in the Midwest. It was kind of not a question. It was an assumption that I would have kids one day. It wasn't until I met my former partner a number of years ago who definitely didn't want kids that I had to question that and figure out where that came from. Did I assume that I was going to have kids because it's what I wanted or because it's what my parents told me that I would do? Um, and I had to kind of face those questions and I came to the realization that I, my ultimate goal was having a partner. Um, there are women out there who want to have kids, even if there's not a, a man in the picture. And that's not me. Um, having a partner is my ultimate goal. I am now with someone who feels similarly to me. They do not want to have kids, especially if it's going to, um, affect the partnership negatively. And so that's kind of where I'm at. So my why for not having kids is just kind of that I'm not there right now. And maybe I will be someday. Maybe I won't be. But I really do think we need to normalize this idea that women need to know whether they're a hard yes or a hard no. There really are a very large number of us who are uh, somewhere in the middle. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about this. Rachel, as I always say, you do you. And I couldn't agree more. We do need to normalize and have more conversations about this. That's exactly why I'm doing this episode. And it's exactly why I did episode 121 and shared my journey. You know, from what you shared, whatever happens in your life, if children become a part of your journey or if they don't, you will be a great mom just by what you're sharing and the, the whole story around it. I really, I really resonate with what you're saying. But for now, enjoy being single because it seems like you are making a choice to truly live and you have a lot of living to do. So enjoy, my dear. Enjoy, my friend. Well, we have quite a mix here so far, don't we? And I want to circle back to those who have made a choice. We've heard a number of those. Some may say it's selfish. I've heard that a few times myself. And guess what? You know what? Selfish is not a bad thing. Because a child, more than anything, deserves nurturing parents. And if you choose not to be a parent, if it is a choice, that doesn't mean you're not nurturing. It is essential for a child's well-being, but it also means that right now you're choosing you, and that is okay, right? So if you can't be accountable, if you're not passionate about parenthood, why go against what your heart and soul is telling you? That's your journey that is your story, and it's also taking us to why Celeste shares her why. I completely resonate with everything that you've said. Um, you know, for me, when I when I say that I am child free, it means that uh, for me, I've made the choice to live the life that I choose to live passionately, without feeling like I have to be accountable or take responsibility for another person's life, especially another person's life that I brought into this world. Uh, if I were to say that I was childless, it was because I tried having a child, um, excuse me, and uh, just haven't succeeded yet. Right now, I'm in a stage in my life where I am choosing to be child-free because I am at a point in life where I want to accomplish more and I don't feel ready to share my world with another life form of my choosing <clears throat> without feeling like I am being burdened. 
And that's such a terrible thing to say, but, you know, I feel like I would be, I would feel so pressured to take care of another life while I'm trying to work on my own life and trying to work on my own accomplishment. Hmm. Celeste, you choose to choose. And if that choice changes, you'll know, you'll know. You're exactly where you are supposed to be in this moment. And from these conversations that I've had, I know that you are not alone in feeling and thinking that way. So just keep being the beautiful person you are and you'll know. That's really all I can say about that. So I want to close with a different perspective from Becca, who shared her thoughts after listening to my story on episode 121. And I think it's wonderful. It truly is a wonderful way to close out all of these shares because it really doesn't matter who you are, what choice you've made, what your story is. As humans, as a collective, we can truly learn something from stepping back and coming from a place of grace and compassion for others because we really, really don't know people's stories or their reasons why, and it's truly their own choice, right? So whether you're a parent or not, Becca shares why she feels that it's important to have that kind of compassion and that grace. And this is coming from a mom. So take a listen. Hello, Hillary. I wanted to thank you for today's episode. I'm a very proud mom, and I have many friends who also do not have children. Over the years, I felt it common courtesy and an act of love not to ask them why they didn't have children. It wasn't to be cold. It was out of respect and not to open any possible wounds. I'm now seeing that this may have been short-sighted and cold-hearted and that if I truly cared for them, I might have posed this question. I might start posing this question in loving ways, but only as it naturally comes up. I feel that each of us are here to share our gifts and it's beautiful to hear how you've shared your gifts with the children who have grown up around you and under your influence but you've given me a new perspective today and I thank you for that thank you for helping me even approach with sensitivity the subject to people I love great episode Becca thank you so much that was so beautifully shared and it really touched my heart thank you Uh, Thank you to Becca. Thank you to all those who took the time to press record and share your stories. And to those who chose to share via email or DM or PM, I thank you as well. I thank you for just tuning in and listening and being open-minded to what we share here on Holistically Speaking. Your thoughts are valid and you deserve to be heard, whether it's here or somewhere else. I just appreciate you being here and sharing pieces of you And that includes sometimes just listening and having uh, an open mind to what happens here on the show and just show up, showing up and being a part of things. So thank you. It is my promise to continue this journey for a place for you to feel safe and to share. And you can continue to press record. You can continue to share on Holistically Speaking just by going to speakpipe.com slash holistically speaking, or you can drop me an email at holistically speaking at gmail.com. I want to know your thoughts because you matter. It doesn't have to be on this topic. We are going to have a slew of topics coming up where you'll have a chance just like this to share your thoughts, whether it's on sobriety or gratitude or numerous other topics that I have in this little head of mine that uh, is sparking some ideas of how we can all really come together as a collective. So if this episode touched, moved, and inspired you in any way, I would love if with thoughtful response, you can leave a rating and review 
you know, wherever you tune in, let others know how much you really enjoy the show. We're on all platforms. We are certainly growing. And be sure to pass this episode along as well as episode 121 so you can hear my side as well. They go beautifully together. And just share this with someone if it sparked a possibility for you that you want to hold space for somebody else. Let them know that they're supported and there's some place they can go. And that's right here on Holistically Speaking. If you haven't listened to 121, I, I encourage you to give it a listen. It's another short episode, but something that I think has true value. And it's really me coming from the heart. And I appreciate your support just by tuning in. And I will leave you with this. Whether it is a choice or the choice was made for you. I want you to know that you are perfect just the way you are. You are a gift. I know I've said this before, but I don't think I could say it enough. You are a gift. Please never forget that. And I love you. I believe in you. Whether you have children or not, whether you have fur babies like this little one or not, I appreciate you holding space for me. And I will see you next week with so much love and pride just to be here to support you. Until then, be well.